This is Dr. Andrea Spina from FunctionalAnatomySeminars.com. Um, I'm going to point out, uh, I've been discussing lately the difference between a neurological tightness versus a uh, mechanical tension and how if you have mechanical tension, it's appropriate to release that tension with release type methods, functional range release, myofascial type release uh, systems. <clears throat> However, when you have a neurological tightness, which would be um, tightness in a muscle um, which is caused by an increased neural drive, um, what we find is a general contracture of the muscle occurring during movement as well as palpatory um, stiffness or resistance without movement. If you want to find mechanical tension, you have to palpate with motion. If you just palpate a muscle statically, you can tell me you can't tell somebody anything about the amount of fibrosis in the tissue because static palpation can't tell you if there's a decrease in relative tissue motion occurring, which is what happens with fibrosis development. If you feel increased tightness in a muscle when, when it's static, that means it is a neurologically induced tightness. Neurologically induced tightness requires different types of treatments. I personally use pails and rails training in order to deal with neurological tightness. But here's a very good example. Uh, this is a 23-year-old elite hockey player. Um, he had uh, several reconstructions on the shoulder and we're just rehabilitating um, his shoulder now. He had a lot of anterior dislocations as is his second surgery. So if you kind of come in here, as I bring his arm into flexion, you're going to notice that even within a normal range of motion, I'm starting to get contraction in these muscles. Okay, so this is an increased neural drive or a heightened activity of the nervous system restricting some of this motion. And you can see that as I bring his arm up, his entire scapula and mid-back begins to extend. So that's telling me that there is a neurologically driven tightness in the muscle. This type of tightness is not amendable to soft tissue work. I just want to clarify here what I mean by soft tissue work. Um, it's not amendable to soft tissue work that has the ultimate goal of breaking down scar tissue or fibrosis. Uh, here I am not referring to soft tissue applications which are um, intended to decrease neural drive. So going in there and doing a lot of soft tissue work at this point would be futile because I cannot achieve the end range of motion of the actual tissue because I'm getting contractile elements which are restricting that end range. So this is an example of neurological tightness which should be dealt with with neurological type treatments.